Welcome back, everyone. The spew. I, I mean, the view. Why does anybody watch this show for any other reason than pointing and laughing? This is a show where they're so confident in their political opinions that they stack the show with far-left extremists and only allow for one voice in opposition. Today, these clucking hens have provided us with yet another stunning example of their bargain basement brand of political propaganda. This time, doing their best to downplay or just completely dismiss the roaring economy. Why target the economy? Because it's like Bill Clinton said in 1996. You came up with a slogan for President Clinton. Right. It's the economy stupid. It, Can right. you make a sentence for I think the... It, it's job stupid. It's job <laughs> stupid. All, it, right now it's... With such a good economy, the media has done its best to either downplay or just straight up ignore any good news as to not help Trump in any way. They have to separate Trump from the economy because simply they're not confident going into the 2020 election. One of the ways that they do this is to, of course, credit Barack Obama with all the good news on the economy and just say that it is his policies that brought us to this point. However, just try and follow their mental gymnastics as they clumsily make the case. You know who's been touting the recent strong jobs report, tweeting that it's the best economy ever. And now to be clear, you know, economic expansion started in 2009, so you might tip a dread to Obama. Two things, like 44% of American workers are making $18,000 a year. That's able-bodied people between 25 and 54. I don't know how you can basically afford to live on that. Oh, you know, em employment, it, unemployment is down and everything is so great. It's not so great for everyone. Mm -hmm. and now, to be clear, you know, economic expansion started in 2009, so you might tip a dread to Obama. In this case, they're denying the economy is good and blaming Trump, then argue that if you do think it's good, then it's thanks to Obama. I pledge to be a servant to our president and all mankind because, because together, together we can, together, together we are, and together, together we will be the change that we seek. It's really funny and aggravating how the media will constantly do this. We'll get right back to mocking the spew, but first let me take a quick moment to thank this episode's sponsor, PatrioticLegacy.com. Patriot's choice for emergency preparedness, survival gear, and everyday carry. PatrioticLegacy.com was nice enough to send me over one of these units so I could give you an honest review. I love this tactical flashlight. It's got everything you would ever need. Six overall lighting functions, escape features like the window hammer and the seatbelt cutter, solar charging so you don't need batteries, a power bank for charging your phone and other devices, and a removable compass with access to a personal safety alarm. <laughs> Patriot Legacy supports veterans and YouTubers like yours truly. So head on over there and make sure to use the promo code DRONE20 to get 20% off your purchase. Thank you. Things like 44% of American workers are making $18,000 a year. That's able-bodied people between 25 and 54. I don't know how you can basically afford to live on that. Yeah. No, actually, you can live on that if you haven't made a bunch of bad decisions and gotten yourself into a situation where that's not enough to pay the bills. What's Behar's solution? More government dependence? Also, making 18 grand a year may not be great, but it's better than having no job. Right now, we have the lowest unemployment this country has seen in 50 years. During Trump's first term, jobs have grown 10 times Obama's over 21 months. During the exact same period under Obama, jobs only grew 7.7%. No doubt The View has completely forgotten what Barack Obama said about those dismal numbers at the time. Because some of those jobs of the past are just not going to come back. And when somebody says, like the person you just mentioned, who I'm not going to advertise for, that he's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? What magic wand do you have? It's also a fact that Trump put those numbers to shame. So while Obama raised the white flag and was more interested in normalizing a bad economy than fixing it, Trump has channeled the great American spirit and has brought back many of those manufacturing jobs that Obama said were gone forever. If we're doing so well, mm -hmm. why is he cutting food stamps? Why that? Why not say, hey, look at how great we're doing. Let's help people who are in difficulty. Sherlock Holmes, she is not. The economy is booming and there are literally more jobs than there are people to fill those jobs. Hmm. One might deduce that more jobs means that more people don't need food stamps anymore. That's the thing with these leftists. 
They want to keep people poor, victimized, and dependent on government. Because as long as you are all of those things, you will continue voting for the Democrats that promise you those benefits. Listening to these idiots, you would think that Trump is ripping food out of the hands of babies. But unsurprisingly, that is not the case. All Trump has done is make SNAP requirements stricter for some SNAP recipients. Parents, children, elderly over 50, and disabled people will not be affected by these changes. Look, the fact is, food stamps were never meant to be a lifestyle. They're a temporary solution to help struggling people get back on their feet. You can't just tout, oh, you know, employment, unemployment is down and everything is so great. It's not so great for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, first off, it's never going to be good for everybody. At least not until we've invented replicators and free energy. There's always going to be a subset of people who are mentally ill or maybe just comfortable being poor or simply don't want to work. But it's better to raise as many people as you can up than for everybody to be equally miserable. These people that Hostin is talking about existed under eight years of Obama, but without any hand wringing from the usual suspects. That's the economy may be doing fine. But the American people are not keeping up to the economy, which is what I'm hearing y'all say. Because then, then maybe that's not, why 50% uh, of Americans want him removed. <laughs> I'm going to close on this last bit of unbridled stupidity. For all these people talk about defending democracy and American principles, they don't actually seem to believe in any of them. In America, we have elections. And as Barack Obama said after his victory, elections have consequences. And at the end of the day, I won. You don't get to just remove a president from office because you can't get over the fact that you lost. You arrogantly claim that 50% of Americans want Trump removed, but if you were the least bit confident, you'd be talking about winning the 2020 election. Instead, you're obsessed with undoing an election and undemocratically removing that president from office. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps this channel. If you want to support me in my mission to expose Democrat Party media, then please consider subscribing to me on Subscribestar, Patreon, or just sending a donation on PayPal. You can find all the links in the description and the pinned comment. Thank you.